Dave here, how are you? Today in the show, we're going to have a look at making a fly screen. Now, this is the window project. It's all fitted in this room. I've already finished this screen. You can see there is a fly screen there. There is no fly screen on this one yet, but that's what we're going to make on the show. I'll take you through cutting it, uh, measuring it, how I fit it into this window. Quite easy. And putting the mesh on. Now, that's the hardest part. And we're going to utilize the Stanton bench to help us with that. See you in a minute. Dave here, how are you? Dave here, how are you? Today is the 28th of May, last show for the fifth month of 2023. I trust you've all had a good week and life is uh, warmer than it is here. It's bloody cold this morning. I had ice on the windscreen. I had to go down to the markets with Vicky and I had the hose playing on it. And as soon as the hose was hitting the windscreen, it froze. Well, the water froze very very cold okay so today on the show we are going to create a fly screen now this one here i have already made and i'm very happy that i did make it before i did the show because there's a couple of things about this screen that i want to tell you about it's very tall it goes this way it's nearly 1.4 meters tall it's 13 and a half or well, sorry 1350 millimeters tall ordinarily you would want to put a spreading bar in the center to keep it apart because this is very, very small profile aluminium. It's not big. And as you pull the screen tight, it wants to pull these things in uh, and you end up with a massive bananas on the side. So I've come up with a way to get around that. And I thought you might like to know my little tips. Uh, okay, so what we've got is I'm going to cut the length first over at the capex. We'll do that straight away. I'm going to use this as my template because this one fits in both the uh, spaces that I created in the, the, uh, in the double casement window. So, doesn't look too bad. Stick with me and you'll be able to see how, to, how we do it. First, I'm going to cut all one angle. I'm going to cut a 45 at the end of each piece. So there's four pieces that I need, two long ones and two short ones. I'm going to cut the one angle and then we'll start doing the measurements and cutting to length. It's easier that way. <laughs> Who would have thought? Let me see if I can find next camera. There we are. It's all set up. This will make a little bit of noise. So I'm going to wear the muffs and also cutting aluminium, which is metal, obviously. And if you get this stuff in your eye, the splinters from this, it's not nice at all. Now, I'm just using the standard blade that's in the capex. Aluminium is not very um, hard to cut. It's a non-ferrous metal. It's only very thin wall. And the standard blade in a capex has got a negative rake on it, which means instead of the teeth going like that, you know, they're actually backwards as they come down into the cut. So it's not trying to lift things up. It's, and I've also got these in the back here because I do not want little bits of aluminium flying back there and all over the place. To make life easy for myself, this is the off cut from one of the lengths, the two and a half meter lengths that you can get. I'm not gonna tell you where I bought it because I was accused during the week of promoting and I did a bit of a story up on Facebook about my EV and I was accused of uh, someone giving me the car and it was an ad and all that kind of stuff. I always let you know if I have an affiliation or if a video is about a product, I will let you know at the beginning that it was either given to me or a, a discount, all that kind of stuff. So. Go find this yourself, because that's what I'm going to have to start saying. 
I won't tell you where I got it. That's all there is to it. There is no, no link for this one. <laughs> so, anyway, you try and do the right thing. All right, here we go. I've already marked it off to length for one direction. And when I'm cutting this, I have to hold it extremely tight back away from the blade. If I don't hold onto it with aluminium or with even, even with timber, as I'm cutting at 45 degrees, it's wanting to pull the timber in and possibly along, which ends up pulling these things in if you're not very, very careful. So a lot of force, more force than you think you might need. And here we go. And I did pull it just a little bit right at the end. So I'm going to nip it again. And wait for it to stop. The reason being, if you pull... I'm going to give that one more cut. Oh no, that's fine. It was just this bag hanging down. That'll come off. Yep. See that splinter? You don't want them in your face. I'm going to give it one more cut. Give me a sec. I'm pulling it backwards. Something's not quite right there. Give me a second. Is it just... That's fascinating. Give me a sec, give me a sec. I want to make sure that I don't stuff it. Okay, I've got plenty there. When you're shaving, people are going to say, well, you should have had the aluminium blade in. It's not a big issue. When you're shaving, sometimes thin wall material, if there's nothing on the other side of the cut, may just start deflecting. So I'm actually going to cut a little bit off it. Here we go. Much better. Now that's a really nice cut. Notice that I took that little bit off. Before, I was just cutting it and it was, I don't know what was happening. I think maybe the metal was bending away from the blade. But because this was on the other side, offering resistance, I got a much better cut. Well, there we go. That's lovely. And I'm going to look at doing this one as well. A little bit of stuff there. Here we go. That went flying. Beautiful. So I have two cut like that, which means now I have, this is the, going to be the inside. I got to cut those to length, but I'll do those in a minute. We'll set these down over here first. Now unfortunately the length of these is just so long. I'll have to move this. Look at that messy. And I'll have to cut it the same way that I just cut those I think. Yes. Now, two and a half meters does not work to get two long lengths out of it. So I have a bit of waste. That's just how it works. These are 1350 or 1320 times two is 26, 40. And by the time you cut the miters and everything, you're way over two and a half anyway. Uh, let me see, here we go. And again. Gotcha. It's important you get a nice clean cut. Yep. Yeah. And the last one. There's probably a whole heap of chat. But you can see why I'm wearing these things. It's just not worth it. This stuff goes flying all over the place. If these weren't here, you can imagine. They'd be 
all up the back here and coming back at me. This way, they're just going off there. So if you've got someone with you in the room while you're doing this, tell them to get out of the way. There you go, flying. All right. All right, I'm gonna have a quick read. Greetings from Northern Kentucky. G'day, Carl, Nath, Skippy, or Skip, um, John, Carl, Nath. You guys are all having a bit of a chat there. John Gibbs, morning. Chris, uh, Eric, um, Derek, Wayne. All these people, 57 people, that's amazing. Must be a lot of flies around. <laughs> all right, so. We have those cut. I will now do a measure off here. I'm not gonna swing the cameras around. I'm just gonna do it. I only need to do one end because they're both gonna be the same. I'll slide this along a little bit. All I'm doing here is holding them back to back for the mitre and then putting a line where I want it. So I held it towards the, the end of the screen to make the exact length that I wanted. And then I did put a little line here, the direction that I want to go. I'm not going to follow that line. It's just going to be, this is saying to me, David, you have to cut it that direction. I'll get the other short one and we'll do the same with that. Making sure that when I've got it here like this, it's the right way around. Correct. Basically, I'm seeing a mirror reverse of everything that's there. And I'm gonna check that one against that one. Yes. I'll bring it in a bit closer so you can see it. So there's my two pieces. There's this is where, let's say this part is the end of the screen. I just brought it along until I was in the right spot, had it measured down here at the other end correctly. And I put a mark there, that's where I'm going to cut to. And I'm going to cut this direction, and this is my waist. Okay. It's really important to put some marks on so you don't get lost, especially as you get older. And I'm going to mark, measure these ones as well at the same time. Might bring that one over. You can see it from Carl Cam. Might be easiest. Why not, he says. Pop those over there because that's where they're going to get cut in a second. Bring the screen over. Move the coffee. I should have done this in the first place. Go to the other camera. There we go. Now we have this length here, and the mitre is going back this direction. I have the channel here, and I have the channel there. Now the channel is for the for the roll in bead to go into. So I'm going to hold that against there at the end. Very carefully go to the other end. Put a mark there and a line back. So as I say, it's a mirror reverse. It's like a reflection. I just spotted Nessie down there. You've been a good girl? Ness. Nessie. Hey. <laughs> the eye bleeds moved. That was it. All right, so that's that. That's waste. Pop that over there. Now this way I don't have to change the angle on the saw at all which is very, very handy. The reason being, if there's any imperfection in the vertical, so straight up and down, I'll mark this first and I'll come over and explain it a little bit better. A 
I'll go to Carl Camp and I'll explain this. Move this out of the way there. Pull this one over here. Uh, where are we? Right. Just a little thing. Because I have my saw swung around, for me, right-handed, I like to cut so that I'm holding on to the stock with my left hand and using the saw with my right hand. So I will always try and approach the saw from its left-hand side. And that makes life easy for me. Ordinarily, a lot of people will cut, do all the cuts from miter on the left-hand side, then they'll swing the saw, saw, saw around to the right-hand side and hold with their right hand and hold the saw with their left hand and do the cut. Now the problem is, if the saw is not dead perpendicular to the table, okay, so if it's leaning over a little bit like this, I'm exaggerating big time, but if it's leaning over just a little bit, then the other cut from the other side is going to be leaning over the other, other direction. So, because I'm cutting this from that side, and it's just not going to work nicely. So, because I'm cutting all the miters from the left, but I'm rotating the stock over at 180 degrees, so this way over, that means that I will still have exactly the same angle of the perpendicular angle. Do you get it? Rather than have that happen. So when I put this together, it should be really nice. Look, it really is nice anyway, but it just, it makes it easier. And now that I've said that, I'm quickly checking. <laughs> the outside is the important part. All right. Now that I've waffled on there, I'm going to go over here. Mike from Iowa, how are you? And Matthew and uh, John, you're having a chat to Chris there too. All right, let's go back over to the CapEx and we'll continue these cuts. Sip of coffee as I come. Across to the saw. Now, of course, you can do this on my bench as well with a track saw because you can cut this stuff with that with an aluminium blade and it's probably just as good, maybe even better. But I'm doing it with this one. I've lined it up. The good thing about having these cut as well as I do, I'll show you. I'll show you exactly what I do. I'm going to push that up to there. Then I'm going to lock it. There's nowhere for the saw to go through at the moment. This is creating a zero clearance cut. You watch this. You can't do better than that. Now I can line up to that edge there that I've just cut and I know that it's going to be perfect. So that little pencil mark that I put there, I'm going to hold that spot on and really hard, as I said before. Pull it back. Don't lift the blade up while it's still spinning, because you'll catch this. Nothing sure. So now I have a really, really nice cut. Pop that one over there. And I know that there's no tear out on the back. It's, it's all just working beautifully. Again, holding it very tightly. Done. So nice. And 
very tightly again. And the last cut. The last cut is the deepest. <laughs> it's the first cut's the deepest, isn't it, that song? Shut up, Dave, just cut. Done. And we'll switch back to here. Eric, random question for anyone with technology. I want this show on a large TV, but in order to access chat, is laptop or tablet. Does this register as two watching or one? Michael, the dark muffs. There's a lot of light in this workshop. Uh, I don't know if the TV actually sees you as registered as being someone watching. Because I don't think the TV has what's called an IP address. So the YouTube will look for IP addresses on the count. I'm pretty sure. All right, the next thing we're going to do is join all these. Now, it's only going to take me under a minute. You watch this. We also have these guys here. Again, I'm not telling you where I got them. <laughs> they have a flange underneath. I'll just show you in close up. See this little bit here sticking up? These have a right way up and a wrong way up. I'll show you in this particular piece here. You'll notice in the profile, there's a little bit of slot just there. And we put that in there, like so. And you see that bit of uh, flat section is going to go into that slot like that. These are easier than a domino. <laughs> all right, I'm going to pop them into all of them and make sure you don't stab yourself. These are sharp as you are pushing them in, obviously. This point, metal, sharp, owl. And the other end. I saw Bay J, oh Bay J, J Bates once had some Ryobi drills and tools. And you know what he did? He painted them all black because people were giving him a hard time. <laughs> Good on you, Jay. That's all, that's all I can say. Uh, Ranks put on the work. Uh, I'm not sure. All right, now let's go to Carl Cam again. Ah, uh, no, let's go to the closer one. There. Yeah. All right, pretty easy. Everything the same way up. Slide it in. That's the inside. This one also is on the inside. And I'm going to stand it upright for this part. Just, whoop, just drop it straight in. Now, the, this is the side that everyone will see. Nice mitre. Nice miter, nice miter, and a nice miter. And they will pull up a little bit tighter as we assemble. So there we go. We have those. I'm going to move the other camera. I'll swing this around to here. I'm going to move that camera back over to here because now we're going to cut the gauze. There's all sorts of different types of gauze you can get. Uh, I'm going to use just a... Uh, style of nylon 
it's called Clearview or something like that. I think that's what they call themselves. Uh, it's made by a, a company that does a lot of fly screen stuff. And that's as much as I'm going to say. <laughs> you can see it's bugged me a little bit because I try and do the right thing. And then it just ticks you off. It really does. Okay. Now, also, I have that competition running. So but maybe that's not a good time for me to tell you about it. But there's links in the video description down the bottom, which has the competitions that are going to be drawn. Uh, we, if the competition... The competition closes on Friday, I think, this coming Friday. And I'll do the draw live on the show. So if you want something for nothing, <laughs> the Rafflecopter is down there. There is a link in Rafflecopter. And it, I'll tell you now, it's an affiliate link. So if you buy something in TSO products using that link, whether it's the DeWalt uh, guide rail square from TSO or whether it's something else, I will get a consideration. That's it. Because you know why? I like things like coffee. I like things like milk. I like food. I like to be able to feed my dogs. I like to have the power on. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, Mike. I, you know, just... Just bugs me. I did reply to someone who made comment about it. I said, look, the internet is a fickle place. There are many, many, many people out there watch this show or watch my videos, and I thank them for that. But they don't know me. They don't know uh, that I am a nice guy, <laughs> if I could say it that way. I'm not out to scam people. And I will be upfront with you as much as I can. And I think a lot of people have been bitten before by scams and are very skeptical about anything then. And I feel sorry for them because that's going to be their outlook on most things in life. And so that's, that's a shame. That is really a shame. All right. Let's go over to this other camera if I can make sure I can see what it looks like there. That's not too bad. Tilt it up just a little bit so that I get to be in it a little bit. There we go. Now I have a mat down there for cutting. As I was saying, there's aluminium, there's stainless steel, there's um, nylon, and then there's this stuff. Now this stuff is pretty clear. Like when you look through it, I think it's possibly the black finish that they've got on it it makes it quite easy to see through I need to do that there and I'm going to I think if I use the 1400 rail directly on top because I know if I cut it to 1400 long it will be long enough there that's going to be okay I'm going to bring it up. I know that I need to cut from this out to there. I'm just going to make it that width. If I have it the full width, it becomes very gangly. And, you know, you're fighting with it. See how it's rolling up at the moment. So bring the mat board back this way, David. And then take this over there a bit further. The idea is to have two centimeters all the way around. Now, you can go more than two centimeters. There's no law saying what size you have to have. But it's basically allowing for me to push this down into the channel. The fly screen's got to get pushed down into the channel. So it will, if I'm making it two centimeters wider, both sides, then that allows the screen to get pulled down in. I might have maybe eight millimeters or a centimeter sticking up on the outside and I'll trim that with a knife right I'll measure this overall I think it's um, 560 let's go 570 and if I go 570 yep yeah, right on that line should be good that's just fluking it I'm gonna hold it down 
with a couple of clamps. Bring this out further this way. I might be able to hold it there. So it doesn't start wandering all over the place. That's good. Maybe another one. Maybe I should paint these black. I don't know. Maybe I'm overreacting. All right, Stanley knife. And I sharpen the blade. As you can see, it's nice and sharp. Just using a, a, a water stone. Wasn't hard. Bring that back over to there and bring this one over right over to this side. Lift it up until I get it to there. And I'm hoping this is going to work. Not bad. That has cut it. Just nip the end. That's good. I'll move it along. Actually, I'm going to leave the board there. Or leave the screen there. Hold it down there like that. And move the board underneath it. Take that off. And put it on that part over there. That'll work. There, there, and there, I think it'll be fine. Cool. I think that'll work. Now, you try and keep your cut as square as possible. It really is important, this part, because what'll happen if you don't, the gauze. Sorry, I'm just trying to get this last part nice. If you don't cut it um, square, there's nothing worse than seeing fly screen at an angle in a rectangular frame. It's just, it's really going to mess with your uh, OCD. It wouldn't, I don't think it would mess with, <laughs> with Vicky's at all. She says to me, you know, I just don't see those things. I said, baby, I see it all the time. All right. But she's, she's happy. She's happy not to see them. And I have to be aware that I, <laughs> I'm not her parents. <laughs> and I can't change everyone. You know, I try sometimes and it doesn't work. Have you ever found that? Have you tried to change someone and you think to yourself, well, that's just not going to happen. That's good. I think that's nice. All right. Now I can cut that across the end, I think. I'm going to check it again for length there. 1400 is good. Yes. I'll put this across the end and cut it off while it's there. Move this back to here. You're spending a little bit of time getting this part right. It saves you a whole lot of mucking around. And grief. Here we go. Now, all of that, I don't have to fight with. I just got to fight with this one. <laughs> I was already wanting to roll up. Take it over here. The PYD's made out of Lego. <laughs> I like that, Michael. I like it. Okay, now, if this was aluminium, or as you guys in the States would say, aluminum, 
they suggest you go around and you create an impression in the mesh first. Now, because it's not aluminum and it's this stuff, this will push in nice and easy. But here's the trick. I'm going to show you the trick now. This is the big trick. See these guys? These are 20 millimeter dogs. And I'm going to put them in right the way down. I, I, grabbed, I just grabbed a whole bucket full of them. This is one of the great things about having a 3D printer. You just print them up. And you, you might think, oh, I don't need it for this job. But so many times they become so handy. And I'll show you why they are so handy. The screen, these mitres are reasonably rigid, but as you're pulling mesh tight, it can, it can deform the screen all the way around. The frame might start moving, you know, and next thing you know, you've got a wonky frame that's not going to fit in the recess that you've created. So do you think this will work? I hope it does. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. Okay, so now I have those together. Let's go up to Carl Camp. And you can see I've got all those there. And you can see it moves around. Well, you know what? It only takes a second or two to make a packer. Now what that's going to do is two things. I'll put a clamp on the end here so it can't go anywhere. And now it can't squish. It can't pull in. Can't do it. So I will cut a 45 degree angle across my first point. So let's get started. And now that this is all small and handleable, is that a word? Look at it, I'm fighting with it already, but I've, I think I've got it. I need to make sure I've got the right end. So one end wasn't square, remember kitties? It was, it was an off cut that was not square. I think this is, the end. Oh, no, this is not bit good either. So let's bring that up to there. Yes. I'll cut this corner off. Like so. I've cut 45 degrees off the corner. Now, I can put that there and I'm going to put another clamp here. And down here, of course, I don't want to have any surprises. Like that. I've got plenty over there. It's holding it square. doesn't matter too much at the moment. I'm basically I'm going to hold it down there. I'll get another clamp over here. And there. Okay. Now the octopus can't get me. And you see how good this mesh is? You can't even, doesn't even look like there's a screen there. Now the stuff that you push in, this, um, I don't know what they call it spline I guess you'd call it this spline they say to, to put it get it warm put it in a bucket of hot water well rather than do that I've had it sitting down the end there under the air conditioner and it's nice and pliable 
but not wet. I've got a couple of pieces here that I think I need to cut. I'm going to cut them just a little bit longer than what I want. And I'm going to do the ends first. I'm going to bring this camera back into the, into the show so you can see what's happening nice and close. I think about there might work. Um, up just a touch. Right, this is the spline. I've cut it to, you know, about that long. It doesn't matter. I don't want it shorter. I want it just a little bit longer. And I'm going to go right to the middle and I'm going to push it in. Now, because it's nice and warm, it's going in nicely. And I'm pushing it in by hand on purpose. I do have a special tool here that I'm going to use in a minute. But to start, I have found by doing this by hand, it doesn't tend to stretch the spline. Now here's the tool that I'm going to use, this one here. Now it has a concave wheel at the front and a convex wheel at the back. I'm just going to push down without doing any rolling at this stage. Now I'm going to roll it. With the other one. Take that off now. And that's looking pretty good. I'm not going to trim anything yet. Now you can see here, I'll bring the camera around this side. You can see just here that I'm up against the side of the dog. I'm up against the dog there. All of these dogs, this is perfectly square. The frame cannot move. It's, it's perfect. Now, that feels really, really good across there. There's no bumps. That's the worst thing to have is bumps and ripples in the screen. Up the other end is where we'll go. And I'm going to pop it in slowly, or I may even turn it end for end. I will. I'm going to spin the whole thing around. It just makes life a little bit easier. Come up to there, which means I'm going to release this clamp and these. Oh, and the last one. I can now pick it up. Spin it around. My bench isn't long enough to do it all. You want to go see how nicely that's dropping in there. Relax that, relax that. Push this down. And again, perfectly square. And I'm looking down the side here to make sure that the pattern of the gauze is still in line. I don't want to see it running off to the edge. I'm going to pull up a little bit of pressure, but not a, not a massive amount. I'm going to clamp it to the bench, as a matter of fact. There we go. What do you reckon, Baroness? Now, there's, there's really no room for deflection here. It's too short to get any deflection. So I'm going to pull the pressure in. That's why I'm connecting it to the bench itself. And I'll clamp this corner so it can't go anywhere. Got it? I really do need to kind of clamp that corner too. Give me another clamp.
Yeah, sorry about the rant. It's just, uh, you can well imagine, uh, it just ticked me off. I was, I was thinking, you know what? Get Ned. I know, I know I shouldn't say things like that, but that's the way I felt. Ah, it's rolling backwards. I don't want that to happen. I want it to roll this way. Come on. That's better. There's a little bit, bit of a hump in the center. All right, what have we got? A little bit of spline for here. Again, it doesn't matter if it's longer. It really doesn't. Push it in. I need to get it pushed down into there because it's popping. There we go. I'm going to have to relax it a little bit, I think. Again, just pushing down. That's going well. Relax that, that, and that. Now I can push it. That feels good. Get rid of that. And get rid of that one. Take it in for the rest. All right, now I'm gonna use a knife to cut this rather than scissors. The spline. Got it. On this end. Hmm. Don't don't cut the screen, David. Gotcha. This has got a little handy little thing on the end here that you can use as a pusher. Just get it right in the corner. Gotcha. And this one. We'll give it one last roll. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. And still square. I love it. All right. Now we're going to do the sides. And I'm not going to uh, do too much apart from... I'm going to lock all, go along here with these clamps. I think that'll just about do it there. I'll put this back on this corner so it can't go anywhere. That side's fine. I'll put a clamp on it anyway. I'm sure they don't do this in the factories. They just go bang, 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 and it all works because that's what they do. Uh, let's go to Carl Cam again. I'm going to have a quick read while we're looking at that. Um, right. Everyone in there is... Uh, is telling me it's okay. <laughs> it's, it's okay to be mad. Pull that out to that length. I'd hate being a politician because 
there's there's more than just uh, people not liking you for what you're doing, but because they might may have a different political view to you. That'd be terrible. Now, as I'm pushing this in, I'm watching. I'm watching right along the edge here that I'm still in line. Like the, the mesh is still in line with, with um, everything else that's happening. Maybe if I come in a bit closer here, that might work. Yeah, so the pattern of the mesh, I'm trying to keep it in line. This is where this is working so well for me. I tried, I tried it without this to start, and, <laughs> and I ended up with a horrible mess. And I had to throw some screen away, and I, I did this yesterday, and I said to Vicky, I tell you what, I'm glad I didn't do that live, because that would have, talk about egg on your face, why is that so far away? I started in the wrong spot, you moron. Stop talking. Come back, come back, come back to there. That's where it is. Anyway. Doesn't take long to straighten up. But you can see, it's looking really nice there. Who would have thought all of this consideration has got to go into putting a fly screen together? People walk into a house and they say, mosquitoes are bad. <laughs> or or some, something along those lines. They don't turn around and say, wow, they're really nice looking fly screens. Did you make them yourself? No one's going to say that. No one at all. Anyway. Now that looks lumpy, but everything else there is fine. And over on the other side, it's still looking really good. It's just looking really, really nice. And I've got good tension. You don't want too much tension because then what's going to happen is it's going to pull in. But at the moment, if I put the tension on equally all the way along, I'm not going to have more tension in the center, so my sides will not have deflected. That's the plan anyway. I'm hoping now that I've said that, that it's going to work. Yeah. Oh. Do you want some pavlova? Oh, no, no, I just want to stand here and look at those fly screens. <laughs> you sure? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think that would happen at all if you went around to someone's place? I don't think, I don't think so. Remember, as I said, with the aluminium screens, they suggest you create the dent first with one of these guys. Just push it in and create the, the fold, and then you put the spline in. Here we go. I'm going to roll it in. That makes such a difference. It pulls it down nicely. And it's not stretching it. This one you can feed the spline in the back and it comes down around the front. I found it didn't really work as well as advertised. Let me say that. Oh, this is nice. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, I'm going to trim that my knife. Got it. And I'm not, not trimming anything yet as far as these are concerned because you never know, <laughs> never know what's going to happen. Now I'm going to take it all off, all of those clamps off. They don't need to be there anymore. And I'm going to turn it all around. Oh, I'm happy. I'm happy.
to there, there, and there, and there. Now, obviously, I don't need to have spring clamps. I don't need spring clamps along the back there anymore because the spline's holding it. All I've got to do now is push this one in. Cut it to length. Oh, I dropped it. It's like cutting a branch. <laughs> cutting a branch on a tree. Uh, now, which one is it? I've got all this spline over the back here. And power cord. <laughs> it looks just like my power cords and the machines. All right, let's switch back to this other camera. Which one is it? Not that one. Not that one. Is it this one? Must be this one. There, that's the fellow. I'm going to do a quick read. I haven't thought of doing it four pieces. I have half expected Dave to mitre the ends of this block. <laughs> I don't think so. This side does not get seen. This side goes up against the frame. So the inside of the room is the other side. So when I've finished, I'll turn it around and show you. Um, lots of bad words. Just a, a one piece, never again. Oh no, I wouldn't do one piece. No, that's that's uh, that'd be ugly. So, what do you think about my little trick here using the bench and the dogs? You don't have to use the bench. You could use a piece of um, quarter-inch plywood. Just cut it to the exact width that you want it to be. But remember. Measure it that the ends don't measure in the middle because the middle could be all over the place. The ends are what you want to be the same size as. So measure the ends, get a piece of quarter inch ply, maybe about a foot wide, quarter inch, like 6.35 millimeter ply, maybe 304 millimeters wide. <laughs> That's it. And then away you go. Pop it in the center here as your center brace. I didn't want a center brace in the thing and stuffing my view up. Why would you want to have a dirty big cross member right in the middle when you've made these beautiful windows to appreciate the view? Riddle me that. I'm keeping my eye on this all the time, where it's going in. You put one piece of spline in all the way around. <laughs> That'd be, that'd be so upsetting. That could be terrible. Some people roll the spline in. They kind of twist it up and then let it roll in like a cylinder. This is nice. This is nice. So I've got a bit of tension on it. But the thing is, if the tension is the same right the way up, it's not going to be concentrated in the center and how that happens is as you're pushing it in it's pulling and pulling and pulling and it's going to go with the least resistance so you'll end up with this curly section right the way down and be terrible I'll tell you from experience it is terrible How are we doing for time? We're going to have it finished right on time. I'll go with this. Stay down, stay down. Don't you go anywhere. And the other way. The reason it jumped up was because I was off the end of the bench. Chris, I'll be packing your bench during the week for you. Get that last little bit and give it a nip. And 
push that in. Cut a little bit more off that one, I think. That's not too bad. And this guy. Good, good. Cut that one. Got it. Pushed in here. That's sitting over, over the top of the other one. I need to cut that back just a touch without cutting the screen. I think I think I've got it. Yep, got it. Done. All right, let's see if it's got any bow. Have a look at that. That's pretty straight. If I put it there, you'll see maybe oh, one millimeter, one millimeter lift. So that is the way to do it. Now, the next thing, I'm going to put it back in the in the jig carefully, and we're going to trim it. Important sharp knife. Also, with this, what we need to do is we're going to don't try and cut cut it like that. We're going to cut from this side, and we're going to tip the blade instead of just flat. We're going to tip it slightly up a little bit so it doesn't tend to want to cut the screen on the screen side. I only want to cut the waist. So I'm going to. So that, all the way down to the end. A bit more. I'll show you. That's a nice clean cut. Spin it around. We're going to go over just a little bit, not a lot. It's five minutes past. Maybe let you watch that nice and close. Remember, don't have the blade tipped down at all. You don't want to cut this side. So tilt the blade up a little bit and rest it on the spline.
use the scissors here for a second and push down onto it. Just get that last little bit there. Come back to that one. And across the end. around Got it. and across the end. Looks like a new one, hey? Well, that would be because it is a new one. It's the preparation, like there are so many little things as we're starting along, start it off right and it'll end up being really nice. It's caught in that corner there. Got it? The corners are the tricky parts. That's it. All right, that is the screen finished. And you can see all the corners are going to be decent because of the way I told you on the saw. So that's the side that we will see in the room. It'll be standing up this way. This is the side that'll be facing into the window and it still looks decent. The next thing I want to do to it, and I'm not going to do it on the show because we're going to can the show in a minute and have the patrons meeting. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to put, I'm going to pop rivet a little handle on the bottom. Just a little handle. I'm, I don't know whether I'm going to make it out of wood or whether I'm going to just use a bit of the aluminium that I've got over there left over and maybe shape something from that. And then I can use that pop, pop riveted section of the handle to lift it up and pull it out. Of course, the style of window that I've done, it doesn't have a cranky windy thing to push the uh, sash out. It's a manual sash um, stay. So I have to drop this out, put it to the side, but that's not a problem. Push the thing up, drop it out, push the window out to where I want it, and then pop this back in again. And it's so easy. I've tried it a few times, it works really well. Now here's the next question. Are they the same size? Are they right? They're perfect. Done. All right, guys, that's going to do me for today. I think I remember, look, remember the um, competition down the bottom. Not a competition. It's a giveaway and one person is going to win. And as I said before, there is an affiliation with TSO products. Everyone knows that. The thing that they said, though, if you're in the States or Canada or wherever you want to buy it, if you want to buy one, you've got a DeWalt track system. If you, you go ahead and buy it and then you win, TSO will refund you the cost of everything you paid them, the cost of the item and the postage. Can't ask for better than that. So don't hang around. If you need one, get one, enter the competition. And if your name's drawn next week, I'll let them know over at TSO and reimburse you. I don't know if there's anything else. Uh, thank you very much to for everyone watching and for putting up with my little rant <laughs> i will let you know i'm going to do a infomercial let's call it that for another um, little power pack so ecoflow had sent one to me about eight months ago and i use it all the time this is what i use for the solar panels up the top 
my little off-grid system. The panels generate the power, goes into this EcoFlow battery, and I can have AC power come out of it. I can run the CapEx off it. I can run the dust extractor off it. I can run all my machines off it, but I can't run the CapEx and the dust extractor at the same time. The one they've just sent out to me is a smaller model, and it's a lithium ion phosphate battery in it, which I found really interesting. That's why I said yes. I'm very interested in you sending that one out to me and I can let people know because lithium ion phosphate lasts a whole lot longer than lithium ion with cobalt and all that kind of stuff. And it's much more stable. And that's something I'm, I love safety. So that's why we're going to stick with that. It's not as big. It weighs just over seven kilos. So you can carry it at the moment. Vicky's got it down at the, um, at the markets with her at the moment because her uh, terminal, like it's a square or it's Zella or whatever it is, and her phone, she hates for those to go dead when she's in a market that has no power, like out in a paddock or whatever. So <laughs> I've started giving her this thing and she takes it with her and it just gives her peace of mind. So she never goes, gets a flat battery. It's, uh, it will only do around, I think it's got 700 and something watts output, but I think it also has uh, a boost up to 1600 watts. I haven't tested it up to 1600 watts, but it does charge from my solar panels, it charges from the mains, and it can charge from a cigarette lighter in a car. Like if you've got an com internal combustion engine car, or any car, you can plug this in and it will charge up. And it'll give you AC power, 240 volts, 50 hertz, on site if you've got no power elsewhere. So I thought, you know what? I know a lot of people that might be interested in that. And I don't think they're horribly expensive. So that's my little bit there. I'm going to go to Patreon's patron will have a 15 minute meeting. I've got to cut it short because I've got to get down and pick Vicky up because what she does when she's finished the market down there, they throw, all, they throw them all out by one o'clock. And if I'm not there in time, she sits on a stool <laughs> and she, all the samples that haven't been drunken yet, she starts polishing them off. So <laughs> before she makes a spectacle of herself in the car park, I have to go and get her. All right, thanks again for everyone. Uh, look after yourselves, be nice to each other. I'll see you next week. I've got no idea what we're going to do next week, but it might be something interesting. See you later. Bye.